In this video, I want to look a little more at using green screens and Avid Media Composer, using Spectrum Mat, using alpha channels, muzzle flashes, explosions, things like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. But first, be sure to watch that first green screen video on how to key out a green screen using Spectrum Mat and Media Composer and watch the alpha channel and muzzle flash video so you know where to get free muzzle flashes, free sound effects, and also there's some sort of examples of what you can do with a green screen and muzzle flashes in the form of commercials for our fake show cop drama. Tune in for a heart-stopping cop drama all new Thursday. Okay, so go check that out. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want to mention is you may remember in the last video with this shot here, you see down here how, let me go actually go ahead and cut this in the scene. I'll just go ahead and cut it in. Okay, and right down here you can see, hopefully, how we're shooting past our green screen. And our solution in that video was whenever we key this out, key and spectrum at, all right, popping in, in here into effects mode, was to just scale this up a little bit, right? Okay, and you can see right here it's still coming through. Now we're not going to, uh, really try to get this key perfect. I'm just showing you, and remember we came down and we just scaled it up a little bit. Fix the aspect ratio, we can scale it up one or two. So now we have a, a sort of clean key, all right? Now another thing we could have done, which to really show this, let me just completely remove Spectrum Mat. All right, we'll remove it there, and I'll just pop it on again. Okay, and we'll come back in. And another thing I want to mention is, you know how we click on our key color. Again, we can always use these sliders as well. We click on our key color, then we click in here, and we click on our key color and click in here. Another thing you can do is click and hold right here. And then as you see, both our video and the video LUT down here in the color info, both of those are changing. So find a good green color about there, release your mouse button and then click down once. So that, that saves you from having to go back and forth. You know. You can do it however you want. I usually just click once and come back and click again. Sometimes I hold down just whatever I feel like that at that time. All right, but that's another thing you can do. So just remember that tip. Actually, let me bring the tolerance down real quick so we can show this on the crop. Let's come down here, down here to crop. And you may be saying, well, crop, that's going to look weird because, you know, it's going to have a hard line on the image. But that's not true because just like our green screen, if we crop it out, then it's completely transparent, right? Because there's nothing there to show. So that's how that works, pretty cool. Now you'll really be able to see this, uh, you know, better if we have something behind it. So let's grab something to put behind it. We'll grab this image right here, put it on to video one, put that underneath. Okay, make sure we're monitoring video two, pop back into Spectrum Mat. And now, watch this, I'll increase our tolerance. Okay, and this is this is not a great key. You know, we shot all this footage with uh, just consumer, a consumer green screen, and we just use cell phones uh, just to show that Media Composer can handle that kind of video uh, very well, actually. And Spectrum Mat does a pretty good job. So let's come down here and let's do crop. Now, under crop, we have T, B, L, and R. So that's top, bottom, left, and right. You can see right here is that flaw. So let's go ahead and pull it in. Pretty cool, it's completely dis disappeared. And if we show the alpha, now we can see how much is cropped out, okay? Or if we just take the tolerance down, you can see that we've cropped out that much of the green screen. Okay, of course you don't wanna go too far. You'll end up losing your subject there. Turn the tolerance, everything disappears, and then it looks kind of odd, okay? So just remember you can use crop because you're not always going to want to be scaling things up, of course. So that's really where crop comes in there. And it works very, very well. Of course, we can do the top there, which doesn't make any sense here. Do right. But you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, scaling, we could scale down and then and move our image around here a little bit. Doesn't make much sense with this shot since it's not a full shot. But you can do things like that with Spectrum Mat. Now we'll show this a little more. Let me just delete that, delete that. And how about we grab another clip where you can really see where crop is going to uh, excel. So make sure we have video two selected there. Make sure that's up there. Okay. Let me cut this scene in. 
and you can see that this this is going to be a problem. Of course, we can't use this like like it is now because we've got a whiteboard here. We see a wall. We see a stool over there. That's not going to work. But come here to Spectromat. Just pop it on there. And let's go ahead and start our key here. Again, I'm just holding down the mouse and release and then click once. There we go. That looks pretty cool. And by the way, you know, if you have a lot of shots that's, that's going to have about the same key color, you may want to set up a basic key, you know, some basic settings or whatever, maybe even some crop settings. And then you can always save your spectrum at. Okay. And then you can always load it up on the next clip that you throw in. So if I have another clip here, throw it in, I could just grab our spectrum mat that's pretty much ready to go. Okay, and then just adjust a little bit. That's just a little tidbit to remember. I'm actually gonna leave that clip there because we'll see that in a minute. Okay, so back to this clip here. You can see that this clip will actually work if we use crop. Again, I'm not gonna really worry about how well the key is here. We just wanna show crop. But before we do crop, let's actually go to 3D warp. Here, remember that promote to 3D button there because we have more options here. And one more thing, you see, you can see I'm wearing green shorts here. Now they're not a problem in our case, but keep in mind that if you are shooting against green, you probably don't want to, you know, be wearing uh, like Saint your Saint Patrick's Day gear. If you're shooting against some blue, you don't want to be wearing a blue shirt, things like that. Okay, so just keep in mind what you're wearing. We don't really have a problem here because it's a different enough green. Okay, so that actually looks pretty cool like that. You can have kind of a weird sequence there. Um, and again, you know, you can have anything behind this that we want, anything at all. It doesn't have to be anything that makes sense. The reason we have that old house is because, so our scene is this guy is shooting. For some reason, he's from the Old West, and from some reason, I'm from the future or whatever. I don't know. Okay. But, you know, it, it could be anything at all. It could be something hilarious. We could uh, be shooting at this helicopter if we wanted. There we go. Make sure we're monitoring track two. That looks kind of cool. But of course, this shot isn't going to work because we need to crop it out, right? We'll come up here to crop. And we can crop out the top if we want. We don't have to, but crop out some of the top. Crop out some of the bottom if we want. Okay. Which may not make sense, but we can. Crop out left. Crop out right. Don't want to go too far there. Okay, about there. And that looks pretty good. You can see I cropped a little too much on the top. So we'll fill that back in. Okay, of course it makes zero sense, but you can do that. And then we may want to scale it maybe down to make our, ourselves look smaller, like we're shooting at the helicopter or something. And then of course we could do things like rotation. Okay, probably some Z rotation here. Like you're shooting up and then just move it down a little bit. Okay. And then you have a nice little funny scene. <laughs> okay. And all of that again comes from this shot here. All of that is this shot here, just using spectrum mat scaling crop rotation. Okay. So just remember those things. Remember about how you can choose your color by holding down or click and then click and then click and then click. And real quick here, let me go ahead and show you that we want to make sure we keep all of our action inside the green screen. Even if we have things going on outside the green screen, as we saw, that's fine because we have crop, we have scaling. Okay. That's not a big deal, but like this shot works, even though we have all this extraneous stuff out here that, that we do not need this shot here, this shot will not work because our gun is outside. We can show this really quickly. We'll just grab spectrum at pop it on here and Let's go ahead and go into our effects mode. And I like to promote this to 3D just because uh, we can do more stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and crop this. And well, we can't do it because the gun's in the way, but we wanna crop out those bars uh, from our green screen. Well, we can't do that, okay? So I'm just doing this to show you that, you know, make sure your shot is contained within the green screen. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with something like this, which does not look good at all. All right, and we can show the alpha here, which is okay. Come to the alpha here, you can see that's not gonna work. Okay, we're cutting our, our uh, actor off there. All right, so just remember those things. Remember crop, remember scaling. And that's pretty much all I wanted to mention about the green screen. So let's go 
go ahead and move on. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, our alpha channels. Let me fix this up real quick here. Let's go ahead and crop this and crop it right. That's pretty good. And take the tolerance up. And in the last video, we didn't use Luma Control. It's, it's perfectly eligible to use. I just didn't feel like I needed it last time, but it's working here uh, pretty well. Let's press the shadow maybe a little. A little bit of matte blur, which I really like. All right, that looks a lot better. Looks pretty smooth, I think. All right, it doesn't really matter how smooth it is. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to what I want to talk about, about the uh, alpha channel stuff. Now, remember we were talking about importing. So when you import or you link, remember we can link these as well, link options, invert our alpha channel, okay. But about importing, and when I was saying that you don't need to resize images that are smaller, keep in mind, I'm always saying that about muzzle flashes. Most of the time muzzle flashes, as you saw in the last video, we're always sizing them down anyway. So if we're always going to scale them down, why blow them up just to scale them down even further? But things like explosions, you may need, if they're smaller than whatever your project is, you may need to resize those. You know, if there's things like smoke, if the explosion covers the entire screen, then yes, you will need to resize it. But specifically for things like muzzle flashes, you probably won't need to resize. So you choose do not resize smaller images. Okay, and of course, remember your invert uh, alpha on import. All right, so let's go ahead and get onto this because I want to show you this uh, real quick, uh, specifically like about explosions. So we'll just, uh, let's grab something here. I mean, we could show it with this, but I want to show it with an explosion because I think uh, it shows it very well. So if we were to import this explosion here, which we've already imported and it's, it's actually a 1080, which uh, what our session is here, our project. So it, it works just fine. It's already got the alpha channel on there, got the matte key on there, so it's all keyed out. And as you can see, I'm actually gonna need to roll it back a little bit because I don't want it over there. Let me just roll this about here. I'll pull it back here. Okay, so you can see when this explodes, it looks good because it's all keyed out. It fills up the whole frame, so there's smoke. All right, so it looks good. But let's pretend this was actually a 720p and we imported it and said, do not resize smaller images. Well, in this case, it wouldn't work because we'll just say about there would be 720p. Then you can see that, I mean, the explosion looks okay, but there's other things connected with the explosion. There's the initial flash, which will cover the entire frame and it's not going to look good as you can see, here it comes right there. So you can immediately tell this is an effect if it's not going to cover the whole screen. So that's why I'm mentioning this. On your import settings, if you're doing things like explosions that have smoke that are you know, going out of frame, then you're going to have to resize those. But muzzle flashes, unless they have smoke that's going out of the frame, you should not need to resize those, okay? Let's go ahead and quickly cover one last thing here that I wanted to mention was about the muzzle flashes. So you may remember, let me get this in a position where we kind of see the gun. We can see it kind of here. All right, let me just grab a muzzle flash here. This one's okay. Make sure we'll pop it in right there. And we'll zoom way in here. Let me turn that on there. Pop this way up. Okay, there's our muzzle flash. And remember, just like last time, our muzzle flash is coming this way while our gun is shooting this way. So what do we do? We pop it over to promote it to 3D and we can come to scaling first, but first I want to rotate it around. So first we'll rotate it around 180. It could be plus or minus here and use the keyboard keys, the left and right keys to get it exactly 180. Fix the aspect ratio, scale it down a bit. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Pop in there. Then we can do some Z rotation if we want. What you may want to do, I just want to mention this, what you may want to do if you're, if you know you're going to have a lot of shots from like one actor who's on this side over here and all of your muzzle flashes are going the opposite way. Keep in mind, we can create, you know, presets for our muzzle flashes very easily. Just, just set everything up about how you want. Of course, you're going to have to adjust things for each shot, but that's pretty easy to do, you know, to 
to make simple, small adjustments. So to create a preset of sorts, we can just grab this 3D mat key, throw it into our bin. Right there it is. Okay, pretty cool, right? So now here we have our gunshot with our muzzle flash, boom. And say he fires again here. Look at this, I'll double click. And now we load this up into our source monitor, which means we can pop it right in. So boom. And this, you know, it actually worked that time. If uh, I were further down here, let's say there's another shot. It's not going to work. As you can see, it's off. But at least our muzzle flash is pointing in the right direction, right? So that's going to save us some time already. So all we need to do then is you know, move some things around. We have tools here too, by the way. That you can use Z rotation, X rotation, kind of adjust things. Just grab the handles there and you can adjust them like that if you want. Although I usually prefer to use my keys or the mouse on these knobs there. But as you can see there, that's a quick and easy way to sort of, you know, get at least get the direction right, the you know, the size pretty close to right. And then you can just pop it right in to your shot uh, with your sort of preset there right from your bin and you're not having to go and load fresh shots and, and uh, uh, switching things around. On an all new season of cop drama, his most horrific enemy yet. Why are you doing this? I'm gonna make you pay for what you did to her. The all new season of cop drama, Thursday. Okay, so that's all we have for this video. In the next video, we're going to look a bit at tracking, and I'm going to show you some of the basics of tracking using 3D Warp.